two, one. What is happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson from Here the Spear, presented to you by NoelGameDay.com. We are here on this wonderful, little rainy week so far in Tallahassee, but wonderful. Cleared up tonight. Wonderful. Wednesday evening here in Tallahassee. Austin VZ is up there in Charlotte, our lead basketball writer. Things are kicking off. Got some crazy things going on this week that he'll talk about. And then we've got Dustin Lewis, our lead writer and editor. Just got the AJ Duffy interview. He's feeling hot. I mean, the spotlight's on him. Just he, he took he now he just gets here at 8 30 now. He gets a commitment. Or not a commitment, but a well, he is a commitment, but AJ Duffy interview. And now he just shows up whenever, makeup on and everything. Yeah, I don't need to prepare these days. You know, I, I just show up and, and put the work in. But yeah, Sports Illustrated, I guess it hits different. You know, I've been working on that AJ Duffy interview since like February, so it was great to finally get that done yesterday. Hopefully, we'll have another one sooner than in the next eight months. We'll see. Hey, maybe so. Yeah, he said that he's locked in. We'll talk about that in the whole interview there. And we'll talk about Dustin's couple shower, too. Sadly, Nate, we'll see if Nate joins us uh, to talk a little bit of North Carolina preview, hopefully by that time. But as always, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. If you're on one of those platforms, hit subscribe. Leave a review on iTunes. We would definitely... Appreciate it. if you're on YouTube right now, hit that like button, engage with us, talk in the comments. We always got Eric in here engaging with us. But what we're going to talk about tonight is some quick hitters, quite a bit, quite a bit. So Florida State lost. We'll give our last thoughts on Syracuse and Florida State's first one of the season. We'll talk about Landon Thomas, 2024 tight end, his decommitment from Florida State. Talk Travis Hunter, big conversation all over Twitter, both because of his injury and also, his visit to Georgia. Get the latest on that. We're going to talk practice observations from Tuesday and Wednesday. Tomahawk's back on the helmets. AJ Duffy interview that Dustin had with him. Great interview there. We'll talk about that. And then NFL Knowles and Sean Payton sucks. Basketball, Julian Phillips is going to be committing. Five-star on Friday at 4 p.m. Deontay Green commits last week. And then media day is next Tuesday, which we're hoping Austin will be in attendance for. And the rest will be all about North Carolina and we'll get score predictions after that. But let's go ahead and jump into it, gentlemen. Last thoughts. So we didn't actually give our first thoughts on Florida State uh, versus Syracuse. I did. You guys already heard my take on it and everything. But Florida State gets its first win of the season against Syracuse, 33-30. to uh, You know, I'm not going to be cocky here. Or I don't want my ego to go through the, you know, spread all over the show tonight. But I was uh, the only one here to predict Florida State to win this game. Everybody on here made fun of me. And I would like, you know, to be a be mature. And gentlemen, do I get any anything from uh, you guys from, on that? A- absolutely not. What? What? <laughs> what? C- congrats, Florida State. You beat Syracuse by three. Round of applause. Whoa! Awesome. I will. I will say. I will say, Logan. I'm pretty sure your score margin was three, was it not? Yeah, it was right there. Yeah, it was, I, thir- it was 31 28. 31 28. Yeah. I mean, you were you were right there. So I mean, I, and I did say that was gonna be my closest of the year, and I don't know. It felt good. I think I, I need to go buy a lottery ticket, guys. I, I, I will give you some props because honestly, I did not think Florida State was gonna win this game, and, and it. <clears throat> I told you guys last show, I was like, just because I'm not going to be watching the majority of the game, FSU is probably going to figure out a way to win. And that's exactly what happened. I got home when they had the 10 point lead in the fourth quarter. And, you know, as soon as I get there, they almost blow it. So what's that say? Well, that means that you're no longer allowed to the press <laughs> box anymore. We have figured that out. And I do want to bring something else up that you might have forgotten. I wanted to share in the Discord, but I was like, you know what? Let's just wait. And tour live here in front of hundreds of viewers and just bring up what Dustin said live, what Dustin said live last week on the show. Let's go ahead and run that up here for everybody watching. I I wouldn't watch a game. Uh, We'll we'll see what you said. Let's go ahead and run it up, guys. You want a a joint bachelor bachelorette party too? No. A joint one? (laughs) Is this the right clip? I'm going to Boston. She's going to New York. Mm-hmm. Good, any... yeah. It's great. What is happening? On that, on that. Any, the, any advice? Sad, 
My comment is that I will be at a couple shower during the Florida State and Syracuse game. So if FSU I, I, somehow I, I, wins, I will not watch a game the rest of the year. I've never heard of a couple shower. You're well, muted. Then. Yeah, what did you say, well, Dustin, in that clip that you won't watch another Florida State game for the rest, for of, rest the, of the year? So you're, for the rest of the year. So you'll be able to watch maybe after. Well, I don't I, will still, I don't think there's going to be a ball game. We'll see. I just listen but, to it on the radio. That's what I did on Saturday. Oh, so now you're going to have to listen to him on the radio? That's. I didn't say that I couldn't listen. Yeah, you didn't. I said I couldn't he, watch. No, he, so, said he, he said he wouldn't watch. Yeah, so he won't watch. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if he Kept sticks to that. So he gets credentials finally. I'll oh, live tweet gone. Gene Deckerhoff's uh, radio show this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gene says it's third and eight. Yeah. Um, and it's just my last thing here on this game. For me, at least, I staff leader and score score predictions five and one right now. I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty good. I am going to make it now an incentive. So whoever wins is going to get like $500 on Amazon gift card. So that's only because I'm leading now. I'm going to go ahead and set that up. You're four and one, not five and one. Yeah, you're not wrong. Well, I'm going to be five and one after this weekend. <laughs> Not a big four to three. Uh, whoa, whoa. I don't know. We'll see what happens <laughs> at the end of the night. But, gentlemen, y'all go ahead and give y'all's thoughts on Florida State versus Syracuse. Fine. Fitzgerald, 34 yard field goal to win the game. Uh, you know, Jermaine Johnson's everywhere. Uh, Jordan Travis ends up kind of shocks everyone. I mean, that's the storyline kind of going in uh, recap in the game is that Jordan Travis starts, McKenzie Milton's on the sideline. Yeah, Austin, do you watch the game? I well, I watched bits and pieces. I was at work, um, so like I watched when I could. Um, I, I was able to see the last drive, um, and then I, I've watched a little bit throughout the week. I, I plan on watching the full game tomorrow, um, but there was nothing that impressed me. Like, yeah, Jordan Travis got the team in a position to win the game, but he also only averaged four yards in attempts through the air. It's not exactly what you want from your quarterback. It's kind of Syracuse's fault saying, hey, Jordan Travis is back there. Why do we not have a QB spy for the whole game? Um, so appreciate you getting us a win, but I need to see more before I go any further. Yeah, I mean, you know, from what I got to see, this was really Florida State's most complete game of the season. Um, it was huge to get that touchdown going into halftime to – get that 16 to 13 lead at the break. And then, you know, in the third quarter, you kind of got lucky with the Andrew Parchment play where he picked up that backwards pass and then somehow ran into the end zone. I was like, that is the epitome of Florida State football in 2021. But if it, if it really was, he wouldn't have scored and it would have been a fumble like right at the one and Syracuse would have returned it for a touchdown. But anyway, you know, they got that lead into the fourth quarter. Then you have the, the drop punt or, or whatever from, I believe it was Ontario Wilson, kind of let Syracuse get back into get back into the game but you know this was a team that hadn't won won a football game and I thought I thought it was good for them to to compete in the fourth quarter and come out with a hard-nosed win because you know to be honest whenever Syracuse jumped that screen um on the on the Miss Cameron McDonald block and got the interception I was like well you know here you go um up by three with I think it's three minutes left I was like Syracuse is going to drive down and score and Florida State's going to lose the game but then you held them to the field goal Jordan Travis Somehow, how somehow had that one run down the sideline where the guy didn't push him out, <laughs> and I mean Brian Fitzgerald made a kick. Props to him. Uh, it, it was about as even of a game as you could ever see. I mean, total yards: Syracuse had three hundred eighty-nine, Florida State had three seventy-eight. Time of possession: Syracuse had twenty-nine forty-four, Florida State had thirty sixteen. Uh, it penalties three for each team. It, it was about as even of a game as you could ever see, but it's not exactly a good thing when you're even with Syracuse. Hey, they were three and one. Come on. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad the penalties are getting cleaned up. And, and that's something we've talked about through the first few weeks, but penalties have been really cleaned up the last couple of weeks. And that's, that's something good to see. Um, hopefully going forward, they, they can find a way to open up the passing game, find a way to get Trace on more touches. He, he needs more than seven touches in a game. And, but you know, there, there's good things to take away from it at least. Yeah, no, I think the biggest thing, like I said, Jordan Travis starting, and that was a little little different. Nobody was expecting that, but, you know, he was able to lead down the field and have that drive. Him and Ward 
you know, we're bringing them down the field there at the end. And that just goes to show right now, Florida State, I don't think has a true passing um, attack. You know, there's nothing lethal there whatsoever, but someone that can get you down the field is, is Jordan Travis right now. And, you know, scoring points, you know, that just wasn't working with Milton that well. And so the, what you have to do, you know, with J Trav is use him. You got to use Ward, Jashawn Corbin. I mean, both, both running backs have had a great season so far. Uh, you can u- utilize Toa Philly in different ways, but um, Brian Fitzgerald, kind of hopefully that helps him get some confidence because I feel like that was one thing that he was hindering. I'm sure you guys agree. Getting get some confidence there, and that was huge for him. And it was nice to see overall the team get this win. I think they needed this. this is what I was saying last week. They really need this to have any kind of like chance. I wouldn't say like any kind of chance, but any chance of going up there with, you know, confidence in a win like that. And, you know, that is just huge. I think that's good momentum going up to on a road game to a team that wants to get revenge on you. That is that they've had this dotted on their circled on the calendar since the season began. I see a lot of people flaming screen passes, which I get the intercept (laughs) on the screen pass happens. But when you got an offensive line that's struggling and you got wide receivers that can't set can't create separation you got to use screens they shouldn't use the same screen every time you got to find like i remember the the with the vikings they're creating screens in the middle of the field on the outside with the receivers with the tight ends they're doing so many different things it's not just the same screen over and over that's the stuff that's got to happen um but when you can't pass down field you're going to have screens like you can't get rid of it forever yeah, and, you know, as, as much as the quarterbacks have been inconsistent so far, you know, FSU, they clearly don't have a lot of talent at wide receiver. And, and I think at this point you're starting to see that the coaching staff doesn't really trust them as much. I, I forget the <clears throat> stat off the top of my head, but it was like I think the running backs and tight ends have 53% of the target so far. The wide receivers have like 47%. I mean, your top wide receiver <clears throat> is just right about – at 150 yards, maybe a little bit over, maybe not even over, honestly. You know, the wide receivers have been pretty porous this year with with drops, and, you know, Andrew Parchment hasn't really been what you expected. And you've got a lot of young guys like Malik McLean that are showing flashes, but at the same time are, are making freshman mistakes, which which is what you expect. And FSU, they just don't have the talent there. You know, they have it in that running game, and that's what defenses are keying on. Until Florida State proves it through the air, you know, no one is going to respect it. Mm-mm. No, yeah, I completely forgot about that Malik McLean drop, but in person, that guy does not look like a freshman whatsoever. Yeah, I think it is not even funny. By far, the biggest wide receiver Florida State has. Uh, what was I going to say? And I completely just forgot about it. Wow, I just lost it. And I had something good to bring up during this game, but I completely forgot. Wow, unreal. I'm ticked off now. Well, um, I was going to say. Yeah, I'll, go ahead. I'll start go ahead. talking, and and then I'll, rem- I'll remember it. it out. I'm going to remember it. But you know, a, a week ago, or I guess nearly two weeks ago, when it, whenever FSU uh, played Louisville, they really the defense in particular, you know, really struggled in those third down, fourth down situations. I think Louisville was like eight of ten on third down at the half, and then you know the the second half they really started to shut them down. In this game against Syracuse, the Orange finished two out of twelve on third down, zero out of three on fourth down. So when it got into those big scenarios, the defense really stepped up and made some plays, and and that was huge in the win. And looking over at the offense, I mean, six of six in the red zone. Like I said before, I mean, just the most complete game that this team has played to this point, and hopefully they can continue to build off of it because they're going up against a heck of an opponent this week. There, there's still some things that got to get cleaned up. Definitely. Like, you can't allow six yards per play and expect to win most games. Um, and I think there's enough talent in the pass rush to where they can get more than one sack. Um, obviously, Syracuse isn't a huge throwing team, but I think they, there's more talent than that. Uh, we'll see how they do against UNC this week with a good quarterback who knows how to get out of the pocket. Um, but I think there's more talent there. There's still stuff that has got to get cleaned up, but we'll see. Yeah, they lost contain a couple times, and man, Schrader looked like Lamar Jackson out there. I was like, <laughs> yeah. that come was on. Like, He's fast, but a, he's a couple of his runs, just, it was just – it wasn't really him. It was the defense messing up and a defensive end not having contain or a linebacker not taking the right angle. So, like you said, Austin, I mean, there's just stuff that's got to be cleaned up, and, and it comes with time. 
Yeah, Nate t- has been talking about it. He's been preaching on this whole this whole season. Nate or FSC doesn't have speed on the defense. And it's showed multiple, multiple times this season. Just no speed to get if you're gonna hawk somebody down to. Florida State doesn't have that, which is which is scary. That's why it allows a quarterback like that and that size too to go and run down the field and, and score a touchdown. I was gonna go back to a few things that I would like to talk to you guys about, but I saw it whenever I was up there watching the game. Uh, I saw Sidney Williams start chirping with the Syracuse player and getting in his grill and just talking trash. And they were going to go on. There was about to be on a third down and they were going to lose it. If, if Sidney Williams just kept on chirping with them because he took out his mouth guard and went up and got into his face. Um, and then I saw 48. I'm like, who is that 48? Like, Oh, that's talk with no, oh, that's Jared Jackson. Jared Jackson pulls Sidney Williams away and gets into his grill and is chewing him out. And is obviously not happy that he's going to probably blow this drive and allow for Syracuse to get a first down here and call a flag on him. That's something I haven't seen in a long while. I don't know about y'all, but that's something I haven't seen in years on a Florida State defense. I think someone in the Discord also mentioned another time this happened between another two FSU players on defense. And that shows to me some accountability starting to build up there between players and along with leadership. And, you know, Jared Jackson came in as a transfer, wasn't expecting much from him. I don't think overall, maybe his career for Florida State just there for depth. But, you know, he's actually played pretty well on the last couple of weeks. But just as a leadership role, too, and a veteran guy being there and, you know, getting with Sidney Williams and, you know, calling him out and talk with him. Don't do stupid things to cause a penalty. That That's big time. And that's what Florida State's needed. It has not had that in years. No, that's huge. I mean, I love it. You know, it's one thing for you to do your job well, but then to look at the man next to you and make sure he's doing his job well and, you know, staying disciplined and pulling them back when needed and saying, look, you know, live in the moment, don't get a flag and keep these guys on the field. You know, let's let's do our job and get off the field. I I think that's huge. And like you said, Logan, Jared Jackson, I I don't think he was really expected to do a ton coming coming into the season, but he's going to be huge for Florida State. He's developed into a viable rotation player and he's going to have an even bigger opportunity now with Dennis Briggs lost for the season. And I think it just shows the growth, not just this season, but in the last few weeks. I remember when Sidney Williams got the targeting call against Wake Forest, nobody said anything. Like he, he just went to the bench. No one said that said anything. He just went to the bench, put his helmet down and sat down. And I think for someone to give him accountability, I think that's huge, you know, yeah, and that's what this team's been missing for a few years. So just to see that change in a couple of weeks, I think it's big. Here you go. So this is a great shot. Someone on traditional on Twitter found this, but here you go. Sydney Williams actually getting a little physical too. plays over. As you can tell, Kier Thomas just walking by, but you know, going for the face mask here, them just getting into it. And Jared Jackson, I believe is all the way back here with 48. That looks like a four, but he comes over and disrupts that and gets i mean he was not happy i I thought they were about to get in i thought they were about to run hands but you know jared (laughs) jackson was laying it down saying "Uh uh-uh this ain't this ain't happening looked like it was about to be first quarter too yeah that's first quarter and you gotta you know that that's a leader to me um and so you know brownlee's eyeing it on but Usually it's always, you know, an FSU player just watching what's happening, not someone coming and pulling him back or not even pulling him back, but getting on to him and saying, stop doing the stupid shit. So I uh, just, that's something that I, that's what I take away from the team. That's a team that, that is growing, I think, and in that regard, and it's huge moving forward for Florida State. So I thought that's something worth noting that is much needed. Um, anything else? Uh, one more last thing too. I know everybody, I think everybody on here knows that I'm high on Jordan Travis, but one thing I will say though, and see, I want to get y'all's opinions for real, but I felt like the start of the season, Jordan Travis kind of wasn't in his, like what we saw last year, the explosiveness kind of was just kind of hindering something, but against Syracuse, it felt like he had that rhythm back to where, like how he was when he exploded last season. He kind of had that eye, the vision, the jukes had that in this game. He hadn't had this. I don't think this whole season, in my opinion, fully, he just felt like he was in a rhythm he was going down the field and he just felt a lot more explosive than what, you know, we had seen earlier in the season. He just, or maybe the play calling was better. It just felt like he, I don't know, just felt a little bit more like a Jordan Travis we saw last year than the start of this season. I mean, to be fair, he was able to at least get in a rhythm. 
I mean, mm-hmm. we, we've talked about it throughout the season where these rotating quarterbacks, it's hard for anybody to get in the rhythm. The Notre Dame game was different just because, I mean, Notre Dame's a really good team, and that game was so boom or bust that, you know, it's hard to take anything away from it. But throughout the next few games, when, when you're rotating quarterbacks in and out, it's tough to get a rhythm for him to go into a whole game saying, hey, I'm the guy. I really don't have to worry about it. I, I think that was better for his confidence. I don't know if it was as much playing call as it was just him being confident in his decision making. Yeah, and I mean, you're seeing it right now. You know, Florida State, they're once again putting their confidence in them. We've seen the change in the depth chart this week. Jordan Travis is once again quarterback one with McKenzie Milton as his backup. And, you know, if he can put together the kind of performances that he did last week, which he's going to need to get his passing yards up. But, you know, if you can get him around 200 passing yards a game and then, you know, hopefully in that 70, 80 yards on the ground along with mixing it up with your other two guys in the backfield, Deshaun Corbin and – Trishawn Ward, who are first and second in the ACC in yards per carry. I mean, you know, you've got to work everybody in in that offense, especially like I mentioned before with how you're kind of limited at wide receiver, but you've got a pair of great tight ends. I mean, Cameron McDonald and Jordan Wilson have got to be more involved than they have been up to this point. You've, you've got to use the whole unit to, to have success. Yeah, you're not wrong. This is a good comment here, and you wrote a piece on this, d this week. But a most a most recent one of the wide receiver transfers right now that just entered the portal is Taj Harris. Uh, he just from Syracuse over two thousand yards receiving uh, and ten touchdowns in his career at Syracuse. But Patrick's asking thoughts on U- UCF linebacker also along with Syracuse wide receiver hitting the transfer portal this week. Any shot to land at FSU? And I know there's a few ties, Dustin, that you may be able to comment on for both definitely with Todd. Yeah, I know. I know for Todd, you know, um, it was as recent as last year. Ryan Barto was the director of high school relations up at Syracuse before Florida state, you know, hired him to the same position in February. So there could be some kind of uh, relationship there. And, you know, he's a very talented wide receiver and Florida state could use those right now. And as for a uh, UCF linebacker transfer, Eric Gilliard, you know, he was actually recruited to UCF by um, defensive analyst Randy Shannon. And that was when when Randy Shannon was uh, the the defensive coordinator and the linebackers coach over there in Orlando for the Knights. And, you know, he's had a very productive career at UCF and he's another guy. You know, he's going to be he's going to get a lot of interest in that transfer portal. And we'll see if he wants to stay in Florida. But he's definitely going to have some ties to Florida State with Randy Shannon. And it seemed like. Um, based on some some past interviews I had read from him, at least he he had a pretty good relationship with Coach Shannon. So you know, if if Randy was to somehow get promoted onto Florida State's coaching staff, or even to stay in that coaching analyst role for another year, I would think they would definitely be an option. Yeah, no, that would be big, and definitely the linebacker side of things. Adding adding him there, experienced guy, and Florida State it, it seems pretty thin there in linebacker, and is always in need for improvement that would help. And you look at the wide receiver room. I still think there's potential for a lot more talent to be there this upcoming year, but that's still thin and just guys, the the product there isn't so pretty. I mean, I understand that the passing attack isn't too fantastic, but you know, you also have been able to, you haven't been able to see Joshua Burrell yet. We'll see uh, if we'll see him anytime for the rest of the season, but he's dealing with injury too. But you know, you also didn't have Destin Hill this year. We'll see if it ends up, we get the, see him in Tallahassee after January, but that's just kind of a unicorn. We'll see if that ends up ever happening, but, you know, finding some experienced guys and, you know, Todd Harris, not a bad player over 2000 uh, yards, over a hundred carries and along with 10 touchdowns in his career at Syracuse, not, not too shabby. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but I'll definitely go check out the piece that Dustin wrote on that and not com. All right, let's jump into some quick hitters of the week. Gentlemen, Florida State loses uh, 2024 tight end commit Landon Thomas. You talked with him, d Was this kind of out of nowhere? Is it because of Florida State in the current state right now? Or is he just kind of, you know, he's a youngin'. Does he still want to visit around and see what's out there? Yeah, so, you know, I've been talking to Landon ever since he – committed to Florida State earlier this season. I mean, we have a pretty decent relationship. I probably talked to him every couple of weeks or so. Um, you know, last I talked to him, he, he told me his commitment to Florida State 
what was good. That was a couple of weeks ago. And, and I had actually done an interview with 2024 running back commit Cam Davis. I think it was last week. And, you know, he was just talking about the relationship that he had with, with Landon Thomas and, and the other commit in 2024 um, DB Jordan pride and just saying that they were all really close and talked to each other a lot. Um, but yeah, you know, Thomas, obviously number one tight end in 2024, he visited Georgia this past weekend and watched them. I mean, frankly, destroy Arkansas. I don't know how else you can put it. Got an offer from the Bulldogs in the process. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is a kid. He grew up a Florida State fan. He He's right down the road at, at Colquitt County, obviously, um, with Carter Boatwright and, and Ryan Fitzgerald. They both played there in high school. So, I mean, the, there's ties to Florida State. His family's all Florida State fans. But, I mean, he's got three years left in his recruitment. Like I say, he's the number one tight end. I mean, he's going to blow up on the recruiting scene. And, you know, it just doesn't make sense to to tie yourself to one school with so long left. I mean, you want to make sure you're making the right decision. And, you know, he's a guy that's going to have a lot of tough decisions to make. And, you know, in a year or two, we can revisit this. And I think Florida State will probably still be right there in the thick of his recruitment. I don't, I don't think him decommitting means Florida State's out of it at all. It's just he wants to make sure he's making the right decision for himself. And just to finish that off, I did text him uh, when he decommitted, and he told me it had nothing to do with with Florida State's record. Um, why he decommitted? It's literally he just wants to weigh all his options and, and make the right decision. You're muted. Yeah, I am muted. I am muted. Uh, I was saying extremely understandable, but whenever you go to Georgia and watch that game and see that, um, can you say it was de- decimation? Is that a word? Yeah, decimation. Yeah, decimation. Yeah, the decimation. That's a big word. Then I like that decimation in Athens of Arkansas like and Kendall Bryles. Yeah, yeah. Like practically, that he watched a murder. On a there was another field. Florida State commit in, in Georgia this weekend, huh? Yeah, there was. Should we should we talk about it? Should we should we bring it up? Because I don't think it was talked about enough on social media. But first, let's talk about Travis Hunter's injury because that was on Friday night before Florida State faced Syracuse. And I think a lot of FSU fans were close to having heart attacks. We're not sure yet, but at least about 20, 26 people had a cardiac arrest, but everybody's fine now. Um, I was about to have a heart attack. I can't imagine <laughs> the state of Nate. Like, I wish he was here to, like, talk about what was going through his mind and, like, the sweat <laughs> that was running down his forehead. And Oh, he had to have gotten up and started walking around and pacing the house. He had to have been so nervous. Well, if he gets on here later, he's always going to make it. He'll just show up. So later we'll get his comment on his boy, Travis Hunter, and what his night looked like during that. But d you got – a good source had told you some things. I also got a good source that told me some things, some positive things Friday night. So we get, we could actually go to sleep successfully, but you know, it seems like Florida state kind of, I mean, Florida state, I mean, he doesn't sign, but Florida state and Travis Hunter with the, uh, what could have been potentially a worse injury end up being kind of a high ankle sprain. That seems like he'll be able to potentially be active and play a little bit, later the season, which I know that was also a big conversation. Do you want to still let Travis Hunter play? Is there any reason for him to, his team is undefeated. They're going to try to shoot for state this year. It's hard to get a guy that's an alpha male, a big time competitor off the field. I'm just saying that um, because if he's good to go by playoff time, I would not be shocked to not to see him compete for that to win a state championship in my opinion. But yeah, what were you hearing D Lou on Friday night? Where? Felt like the world was going to fall apart. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, normally I'm just chilling in my living room, like watching high school games and and checking up on others to see how like guys are doing. But, but this Friday, I actually, my, my fiance's parents were in town. So we all went out to a nice dinner and I was like, okay, I'll check my phone every now and then. And I check my phone and see people tweeting Travis Hunter is injured or Travis Hunter just broke his leg and all this stuff on Twitter. I'm like Jesus, why do people do that? First of all, I'm like, there, there's uh, no way, like they're capping. And then I see a verified account tweet about it, and I'm like, 
oh, I don't, I don't like the way this is looking. And then, you know, the next thing it's like 20 minutes later, you get the picture in the ambulance. And you're like, what the heck just happened? And I'm sitting here at dinner. I couldn't, I couldn't eat. I could barely eat or like talk for the rest of the hour. I was like just traumatized. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> I got home and yeah, I was just trying to dig up some information. So I talked to a couple people and finally about midnight, 1230 or so heard back from someone. And they told me that Travis Hunter's injury wasn't as serious as they thought. You know, a lot of people were thinking it was possibly a broken leg or a fractured tibia, which, you know, would have just been catastrophic, especially for a guy who's as athletic as a, uh, Travis Hunter, and luckily it just came back with, like you said, Logan, some type of high ankle issue. They thought it could have been potentially a small fracture even, but regardless, he avoided surgery, only expected to be out four to six weeks or so. So I guess you could say there could be a chance he could come back in the playoffs, but I don't think it's something that he himself or even his uh, coaching staff at Collins Hill would would probably allow him to do because – you know, obviously this is a kid with a bright future and, and you don't want him to go out there and aggravate an injury before he signs with Florida State. And it's kind of the same thing that Rodney Hill is doing right now. You know, he's dealing with a foot injury himself and he's going to set out, I think, the rest of the season. And, you know, he said it's really tough to uh, miss out on playing the rest of the se- season with his guys during his senior year, but he has, he has a career coming up. Yeah, no, he most certainly does have a – bright future ahead and I, that's what I get so worried about like I was watching all the highlights from this summer and it just pains me to think you know god almighty he's jumping like over two people he's 15 feet up in the air I'm like oh my goodness gracious whoo lordy we need that to uh, simmer it down we'll, just we'll, like can anything go right for Florida State football <laughs> but I mean you know all things considered it you know even though he's injured it was great for him to escape what we thought it could have been at the beginning. I mean, it honestly, best possible outcome. And see, the ambulance picture? Ambulance. Yeah, the like, ambulance picture, man. Come on, man. Come on. He does, I mean, come on. It's like, what God. just happened, man? The ambulance picture did it. That's, you know, there was enough of like the Twitter rumors and that was enough. And somehow getting word from Travis Hunter made it just even worse and scarier. <laughs> on the, yeah, you take a picture of an ambulance awesome. and says, I'll be all right. Like, Ah, that's even worse. that's terrifying <laughs> oh my goodness gracious the only reason why hey, i'm glad i'm glad he's all right you know yeah. big sigh of relief from florida state fans and it, florida state coaches the people that cover florida state because i mean we can't wait to see what he does on the field once he gets to tallahassee in january so let's talk about it i was hunter the next day this was a noon game in Athens. He goes and visits and sits in the stands. <laughs> Seems like all, almost by himself to watch Georgia versus uh, Arkansas. And, you know, this is in state for him. Lives in Georgia. He can just drive on over. But what what, what is everybody's thoughts on Travis Hunter and going and visiting that? Because, you know, we, we tried talking with a few sites over there in Georgia and kind of get any word on maybe what was going on there and try to talk, you know, we, we'll go to the AJ Duffy interview and stuff and talk about that. But, you know, that was a big conversation on Saturday, getting up to the press box and everybody's wondering, you know, Travis, Travis, Hunt, Travis Hunters is up there uh, hanging out in Athens on Saturday afternoon and got to see Georgia do its thing against Arkansas and decimate them. And it was, it was loud. I got to give it to him. That was loud for a noon game. Should anybody be worried, Delu? Should anybody be worried? And we're quoting this on. We're going to quote this on you. So then, whenever things hit the fan, we'll be clipping that and posting that on Twitter. So be very careful with your answer. <laughs> you know, admittedly, I, I was a little surprised that, that he showed up at, at Georgia on Saturday, especially you know after everything that happened on Friday night. I mean, you'd at least think, come on, push the visit a week. But yeah, he he was there um, in Athens to unofficially visit the Bulldogs. And like you said, Logan, he was in the stands. And man, I mean, it seemed like this thing was kind of, they were trying to keep it as under wraps as they could before someone on the sidelines snapped the picture of him, posted it to social media. And we haven't really heard a lot of comments from, from Travis Hunter this week to us or to other sites that are covering Florida State. So it's a little quiet on that front. And it scares me. I, I don't, um, you know, I've, talk, I've talked you? to, 
I've talked to a couple people. There, there's nothing really concrete to report at this point other than, you know, he's obviously got some interest in Georgia or he wouldn't even be there. I know some people from other Florida State sites have, have said, like, it was always his intention to take visits and whatnot. But, I mean, to not even publicly announce this visit or to let people know. I, I mean, I wonder if Florida State's coaches know. I, I don't know to that extent. I would hope that they knew he was taking the visit because if not, I mean, that, you know. <laughs> it's a little tricky. That's a little tricky, yeah. You would hope so. I'm sure there were some chats. You're relying – I mean, you're relying on Travis Hunter's commitment to keep, keep that class, class. – 22 together. I mean, number 10 class in the country, 18 commits – Travis Hunter is a big reason why no one has jumped off the boat yet. I think you're going to lose a couple people regardless, but you know, if he was to, to dip, you, you would lose even more. There's some guys that I think are going to be in this class because Travis Hunter is. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's the alpha male and he's keeping that together and he's practically Florida state's best recruiting tool slash coach. It feels like, like, that is a big time guy. And we saw the kind of magic he did during this off season, which helped bring up that momentum for Florida state to have that number 10 class. So some we'll, we'll keep an eye on. I'm personally not, not really that worried as much. I think he's been being bombarded by 20 sites a day. Plus, you know, he's going through schools. I got to remember, this is just a high school kid. He's going through all that, trying to spend time with family, you know, just things are crazy. I think, I think he really wants to be coached under Norvell. There's there's sometimes it's a difference. Like you can go to a school that's doing fantastic, great, that's awesome. But sometimes you just want to play for that coach and one that you know that cares for you. And it seems like he really wants to be under Mike Norvell. I think that's still the tweet that's pinned on his Twitter is him it talking is. very highly. Yeah, talking very highly about Mike Norvell. And I can see that now that I get the chance to be at these practices, I can 100% understand why these players – would want to stick to coach Norvell and believe in the process because he's the kind of coach that, you know, he'll be positive with you and then he'll show you, you know, some hard coaching and that's just what football is all about. And I he just is a smart coach. And so I understand, you know, I, I, that's why I'm not so worried about it. I, I'm really not. And I think it's really just, you've got Florida State has the number one player in the country committed. He's a generational <laughs> talent. And Florida State is one and four. I think there's definitely reasons to be freaking out, but I think it's just a little over exaggerated, and people need to go get a drink. <laughs> I've just got that mentality, man, because you know we we've been down this road before. Mm -hmm. uh, we all saw Sam Howell in, in 2018. We all saw Luke Altmaier last year. Guys that were locked into Florida State, guys that were bell cows, and then when it came down to sign. They didn't end up in Tallahassee. So I've just got that mentality. But, you know, Travis Hunter, obviously he's been outspoken about his feelings on his commitment to Florida State. He said it on um, countless IG lives, like they can go 0-10. You know, I, I don't care. And we saw it on Instagram. I mean, it was a little comment on on Kashawn Sapp's post, but I think Kashawn said 100% locked in and Travis said yes, sir, or something like that. I mean, mm -hmm. not the biggest thing, but, you know, just, just little signs and – Hopefully everything will be all right. I don't really know. <laughs> We're investigators now. I feel like there, there's a point of being a reporter, journalist. So this is investigation mode. This I've been working on that. I, I told everyone in the Discord. I was like, when I have something concrete I can tell you, I will tell you. But I'm not, I'm not going to just make some rumor up. Uh, no, no. no we'll the facts are he visited Georgia. He's committed to Florida State. He's been vocal about why he loves Florida State, and, you know, we'll see how it shakes out. We got two months to go, a little bit over two months to go. We stressing everybody we'll see where, out. We'll see where that signature goes. I thought my graduation was going to be the most stressful thing, but it's going to be Travis Hunter's signing. Because you could you – let's just, can we talk about it for a second? What about if there's, like, Georgia hat on that table? There's no way, right? You mount, imagine the sweat that will be coming through everyone's armpits. Like, I'll be, like, put my arms up, be fucking sprinklers. On the damn table. <laughs> oh, no. That won't happen, right? There's no way. There won't be other hats on the table, right? I mean, if hey. he's committed to Florida State at the time he's signing, I, I would hope there's no other hats on the table because that's not what a commitment is. But Sam Howell? Or, you know? <laughs> he decommitted, I think. 
Uh, I don't know. I don't remember what Sam Howell did. Whatever. <laughs> we got to stop it. We got to stop it. I'm gonna, we'll talk I'm about gonna, Sam not... Howell in a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to him. Let's go through some of these really quickly. Practice observations. I was there on Tuesday and know it was there on Wednesday. Bring up a few things here. Uh, all quarterbacks were in participation. Even Gino? Uh, even Gino. Gino had some good balls. Uh, okay. Out there. Yeah. He had some what? He had good balls out there on Tuesday whenever I was there viewing him. I got to see his good balls and all right, uh, played very well. We're I will not say sponsored by Manscaped anymore, so you don't need to I know. I'm not saying anything about Manscaped. I will say, so I was there, they have crowd noise. When I say it's loud, it's effing loud. Like, I mean, I showed up and I immediately was like, okay, so I need to go ahead and leave or I need to get some ear like earbuds. I need air or uh Noise cancellation, but extremely loud. They're preparing for a loud stadium up there in Raleigh. Uh, I think overall for me on Tuesday, the winner was Darian Williams, wide receiver. I thought he made some great grabs. Jubba Purdy had a nice deep ball uh, in their first uh, series to him. Uh, it was a deep, uh, I think it was a deep post, and Darian Williams caught it. And he was right on the sideline, too, and caught it and brought it in. But Mike Norvell was really happy with him and kind of really happy with him throughout the whole entire practice. A lot of energy. I don't know if Norvell is going to have a voice. I was in shock that I was able to hear him during the interviews after the practices. But Norvell has brought it. I thought he had a lot of energy last week, but it is on a different level. I think Noah talked about it, too, in his report and all the goodies in there. If you guys make sure you're in the Patreon at patreon.com slash an old game day. And we give you the rundown of what's going on in practice live. Can't tell you everything, but you do get the inside scoop of what's happening. Uh, but, you know, Sidney Williams, along with Key, Keyshawn Helton, also had a really good day on Tuesday. Uh, Jermaine Johnson actually caught to a Philly midfield and stripped the ball away uh, for a takeaway. Jimmy Robinson picked it up and Norvell was loving it. And Norvell actually jumped on top of Jermaine Johnson. It, looked, it was like a giant holding up Mike Norvell when he jumped on him, but it was pretty cool to see. Uh, and that's what Mike Norvell, he was stressing on whoever got a takeaway during Tuesday's practice. He was all hype jumping on him and, you know, dapping him up. Like that was huge for him. And he talked about in the presser afterwards that they've got to get better at takeaways, not only when the ball's on the ground, get on it. You got to if, if someone's got a potential for an interception, you got to catch the ball. And so it showed in the practice, most certainly that whoever was getting those takeaways, were going to get a lot of love. Sydney Williams also, Sydney Williams had great coverage to the flats on one of the plays and caused an incompletion. And Adam Fuller, you know, the big thing we've talked about it on the show is Florida State's defense is just getting diced, you know, every other play with out to the flats throws from any quarterback. And it just ruins, you know, the defensive drives that Florida State could get off the field. And, you know, Adam Fuller was loving it. He showed a lot of love to Williams. And then he came over and even dapped me up and <laughs> obliterated my hand. I After the practice, I sent a picture into our group chat, but <laughs> literally my hand <laughs> was red. And it's more like your I, forearm. Well, I didn't expect him to be doing that. Like it was right in front of me and I was like, damn, that's a good ass play. Like it's hard to be like neutral and all that kind of stuff. Whenever you're just like, damn, that's a good football play. So I was like smiling and, and nodding and he just comes right over and just whacks my arm. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, but yeah, that was Tuesday. Um, I mean, nothing too crazy on Wednesday's practice. Trevor Purdy is getting a lot of reps right now. And I think that's just because as, as a freshman coming in, Norvell has been preaching on that. He wants to get him some more time in there and get rid of those freshman mistakes. Uh, but nothing too crazy after that, you know, just seems like getting, getting a lot of reps for Purdy. And I think that's just potentially that he could be a backup in the near future. I think he would have been the backup for Syracuse if Jordan Travis I were to be out a series. Yeah, I mean, I thought one of the, I guess one of the bigger things to come away from practice this, practice this week was Norvell talking, and it was either I think it was yesterday where he was talking about um, getting the special teams to to improve, and you know that's that's an area of the team that I've kind of criticized a little bit recently, especially you know you think about kickoff return, the returners are 
long or lazily jogging the ball out of the end zone. The guys aren't blocking and creating holes. It's just a total disaster over there. We've talked about Ryan Fitzgerald struggles. Hopefully that is over. And then, I mean, even on the punt return unit, you know, your, your returner is misjudging the football. He's either, he's not fair catching the football and letting it bounce into, you know, farther into FSU territory where it's got to be like an 80 or 90 yard drive now, or he's going to fair catch of a ball and then drops, drops it. So Florida state needs a lot of work on special teams, which was an area that Mike Norvell really harped on whenever he came into Tallahassee, you know, he said that it was the way special team, he prides himself on the way uh, the special teams unit performs and he can't be feeling a lot of pride right now. Yeah, no, not, not, not so pretty special teams, to be honest. Uh, you can't be jogging when you get the kick return. You got to be going. You got to get going. And I think Ja'Kai Douglas has the speed, but might not be the best person for a kick return. Uh, you know, there's been some talk maybe about Toa Philly having some potential there. I think he's he's a shifty guy. I think he does good in space. He might be your best guy in space. Him and, him and uh, Ward, I think, are... Uh, but yeah, I mean, special teams has to be improved. It's been awful. And that's something that Magnarell last season had changed quite a bit. And they were doing fantastic, but it seems like things have fallen off a little bit. But there's got to be a fix there. And they practice that a lot during their days during practice. I mean, it is practice, I think, I two, hope so. Yeah, about two times every practice. So I'm going to add so an extra period. Maybe another period needs to be added in. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah something that's got to be worked on. Uh, let's jump into another topic on here. Tomahawks are back on the helmets. I know everybody need it. It's going to change Florida State's season. It's going to turn around Florida State. Mike Norvell wasn't going to allow any Tomahawks until Florida State won a game. I think that's... Respect, honestly. Yeah, no one don't should reward, get it. Don't reward them if you're not performing. I mean, what's the point? Yeah, no can't have it until you win. So those are going to be back and they'll be worn against North Carolina. If they so lose, keep... do they take them off? I think you got to take off. Like <laughs> you got to take off one every time. If you do lose, nah, you got to take off more than one. Make it hurt. Jermaine Johnson should have about like 15 going in the North Carolina game. Like there were some players remember back in 2013, like, Got to be like Jameis at thousands. Lamarcus Joyner, I don't think like he his like were overlapping. I think there was like some where they were overlapping each other. But, I mean, Dylan that's what it Smith. looks the best when you have a ton on there. When you have like three, it's like, well, what's the point? Yeah, if there's no, it, three, I'm assuming they're academic. That that's always what it is. <laughs> I think it really depends too if they're on. Yeah, academic too, I, and that's something Magnerville preaches on is academics but i'm also thinking too they've got to be also on your front i think a lot of players put it on the back and they start off on the back but if, the, if you reach to the front of the helmet then you you're already filled like you're you're rolling don't you think did yeah. you ever get any in high school dustin i mean i played for not a great high school, so we, we barely had helmets. Damn, you know? talking crap about Florida High. Dustin Lewis, alumni right here, now Sports Illustrated, talking trash about Florida High. We were underfunded then. They, I'm talking done a Charlie Ward job up in the past couple. He doesn't do football. He does basketball. I know. He does basketball, but he's still a big tar- big time part of that uh, school. Can't believe what you just said. But as you can see, Talon Smith's got a on there. Telling Smith's a travesty now? Oh, my no, gosh. No, I meant – Damn. My, com- my comments. <laughs> yeah, your comments. Yeah. Apologize. But, yeah, now, if you could reach up here, this is just uh, – this is already the Clemson game, too. They should bring that helmet back, the whole thing. Yeah, these helmets. I mean, this face mask is gorgeous. I, I like the current spear better. I, I think I'm in the minority, but – I, I like think you could keep better. the current spear, but the tent of the helmet – Yeah, the, the tent of the gold has to come back. Yep, and then these these face masks have got to come back. These are amazing. I mean, Telvin we, don't have, we don't have a linebacker that's fitting enough to wear that fa- fa- that face mask. Like Telvin had to have that face mask because he was menacing. Y- you want what DJ Lundy wearing that? Come on. Whoa! No hey, what's Telvin wrong with Smith. DJ Lundy? He's not Telvin oh. Smith. <laughs> Damn. I said after everybody. You, who, who else do you want me to say? Cortez Andrews? Who, who like? <laughs> Hey, that's my guy. 
Go on. I'm just, but like, whoa! Just, like, you have to you're a guy. You're you're a journalist. There's That's just true. there's just not a player deserving enough to wear a face mask face mask with six bars on it. Uh, Jermaine John Jen saying uh, Jermaine Johnson should look like wallpaper tomahawks. <laughs> you're not wrong. They should be like dangling off of his helmet. We'll see. We'll see they how many just tat tattoo him up with them, like on his arms. That's how many he's got. Free ta free tattoos. <laughs> Do you think? I think he'd want to be paid first to like get those tattoos. Oh yeah, you can do that now. Yeah, so I mean, ta tattoo deal. A tattoo deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Jermaine Johnson's gonna have quite a few that we'll see. Who's gonna have? Who's gonna have the second most? Who's gonna have the second most tomahawks? And I need to know the answer. This is the biggest burning question. Here? Wow, Kier Thomas. I think Ryan Fitzgerald. Gino English. Austin muted his mic and went away. <laughs> Gino English. Uh, I'm doing homework. He's the GOAT. Gino English. Put us put in the chat who's going to have the second most tomahawks. I think it's going to be Jermaine. Uh, second for me, I'm going to Sean Corbin. I think it's either going to be Corbin or Kier. It's got to be one of the two. Okay. Cam McDonald probably going to have a good amount. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's jump. Oh, we got in the chat. A lot of Corbins, a lot of wards. I agree. Ward should have a lot too. I do help to have that game winning drive there with Jordan Travis. We'll How many see. Tomahawks does a guy like Jane Robinson get? Four Four or five. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why is that? So, so what does Jermaine get? What does Jermaine get? Four. Jermaine got to have at least 15. 15? But no, I was going to no, say, say at least 10. A sack, so a sack's probably like three. One. Oh, no. I don't know. If he's gonna have all right, then if he's gonna have 15, 16, like then where's that? He should be those from? that should be your next goal, Logan. Figure out what how many well, do I'm you at get practice. So that's what I'll do. I'm at that's practice. Your press, that's your press conference question. Yeah, talk right talk to the equipment guys. Yeah, I'll see if I can get an interview. Gotta to talk to the SID, see if we can get this is the burning question I think everybody needs to know. So I'll write a whole article on it. I'll get like a sit down interview and everything with the equipment manager. That's something I'll work on before the end of the season. We need answers. We do need answers. So uh, let's good. jump. Yeah. Uh, Dustin, you had a big time interview. Current FSU quarterback commit. We talked about him earlier, but AJ Duffy, number six quarterback in the 2022 class. You got to sit down with him and chat about his commitment to Florida State. Mike Norvell, I thought he had some pretty interesting comments, too, about his visit to, uh, to the Notre Dame game. And so that was the best environment he's ever been to in college atmosphere, college game atmosphere. But, yeah, talk to us a little bit about that interview. It was a great interview, too. Uh, I don't I don't have it pulled up. But anyway, like, like I said earlier, I was, I've was i been working on this one for a while. It was good to finally uh, connect with AJ last night and talk for a couple minutes and you know, we just talked about IMG start, which obviously, you know, powerhouse football team. They're off to a six and zero start. I'm sure they're going to dominate again this Friday night. But, you know, one of the one of the quotes that stood out to me. Um, at least to to start off, I guess we can start off with his commitment. Mm -hmm. So for him, he said that he's locked. He's locked in all the way, hasn't wavered at all in his commitment. We talked about tribe 22. You know, obviously, people in the comments were, I mean, we're talking about Travis Hunter's status tonight and being a little worried. With Florida State's slow start, there, there's a little bit of panic that, you know, maybe this recruiting class, there could be some guys that jump off ship or this thing completely falls apart. But Duffy doesn't agree with that. There's a quote from him. He said, we're all pretty much locked in. Everyone that I've talked to, no one has wavered or anything like that. That's dope to see that we all want to go to FSU regardless of how the season goes. We know that <clears throat> we know that we can't really control how the season is going. We can only control what we do when we get there. We kind of look at it like that. And then he said, I'm super confident once we start to win a few games and everyone sees that Coach Norvell really knows what he's talking about. Coach Dillingham really knows what he's doing. We'll get more guys on the boat too. So, I mean, you know, he sounds fine with everything that's going on. Going on. I'm sure he's not happy with the one and four start. But like you said, I mean, there's not really much he can do about it until he gets on campus and starts to be a part of, of changing this program <clears throat> back around. And the other big comment was about the quarterbacks. And, you know, I asked him what he thought about Jordan Travis and McKenzie Milton. He said, I like the offense a lot right now. It's been a little different with the two quarterback system. 
So I don't get a real glimpse of what the offense would be like if someone like me was playing. Obviously, if I was playing, there wouldn't be two of us mixing in. I see a lot of stuff I like, like how we're trying to improve every week and the direction that the program is going is everything Coach Norvell told me. I see the guys starting to come together, playing for each other. So it's awesome watching that. And I thought it was big, you know, just the confidence from him. He's like, whenever I get to Tallahassee and I'm the starting quarterback, there's not going to be someone rotating with me. You know, I, I like having a guy with that alpha mentality who's who's confident in his skill set, especially at the quarterback position, which is where you need someone with a ton of confidence in their game. You know, go out and make a mistake, get it out of your head, and then go out and score on the next drive. Yeah, no, that that was a big time quote there. That is a alpha set mentality there. Uh, he's going to come in here and compete. You, you'll still have Chubba Purdy. We'll see if, you know, you know, Tate Rodemaker is still at Florida State. Um, and you'll have Jordan Travis too, but it seems like he's coming and he's saying, this is going to be my team and we're not going to be running those silly two quarterback system type of deal. And so it shows that he's confident in himself. He should be. He's a talented guy. He's facing really good competition every week at IMG. And to talk about him locking down his commitment, he's already, you know, game planning for the classes to finish up and then get to FSU as soon as possible to, you know, early enroll, you know, this guy, this guy is full of, full of alpha, you know, and I, I'm trying to remember <laughs> someone that's had that, you know, last coming to force, at least at the QB helm. Yeah. Like you said, Logan, uh, one thing I asked him during the interview, I mean, this, this is a guy top 100 prospect, number six quarterback in his class. I mean, obviously a lot of talent and there were a ton of schools after him along with FSU before he ended up committing to the Seminoles. So, I was asking him, you know, who's trying to flip your commitment, especially right now with FSU struggling. And he said, no one, no one really. Let me find the actual, mm -hmm. <laughs> the actual quote. So no one's, no one's even okay. trying. He said, he said um, I wouldn't say there are any schools trying that hard right now at all because I kind of shut it down. I really just talk to Florida State guys, get a few DMs every now and then from coaches. I have a personal relationship. Other than that, no recruiting. So. From A.J. Duffy, he shut his recruitment down, went on to say later in the interview that he's finishing up his classes so that he can be an early enrollee. He's going to be signing with Florida State in December and enrolling in January. And, you know, that that obviously means he'll get an opportunity to go through winter conditioning with the team, uh, with Josh Storms. He'll get to go through spring practice and get an early start into the playbook, into the system, and then, you know, honestly, in my opinion, have a viable opportunity to compete for that starting job uh, once next fall rolls around. Yep, full of competitiveness, too. I also didn't know he had so many tattoos. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Um, Dustin, you think you could get that many tattoos at the age of 17? Would your mom allow that many tattoos or any? I don't think she'd be, would she? Or would that hurt? You think they'd hurt too much? Yeah, I mean, my mom would probably fight me. <laughs> awesome. You? But hey, I've always wanted to get a tattoo of like the Celtics Lucky the Leprechaun on my arm. So maybe one day. <laughs> oh, God. I hate I'll needles. Have to get a, get one, but I don't think I'll have to get a, like a spear up my forearm. <laughs> I literally just thought about that. Like, I, I literally just thought two days ago, I'm like, a spear up my forearm would look good, but I, I would never do it. <laughs> I think VZ could. Yeah, I would probably rocks, never do it. VZ rocks, like, all the swag stuff, so I feel like he could wear it. I don't know. I just didn't know he had that many tattoos. That's, I guess that's, that's Those all Those are temporary I'm here tattoos, for. Logan. Come on. Yeah. Photos. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But, yeah, that was a great interview. You guys go check that out. It's on the homepage. No Please click down. on it. Click on it. Click. Just click on it. You don't even have to read. Oh, it'd be nice if you scroll down and read it. You know? Click on it. Refresh it 50 times and move on. Let the ads populate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely go check out that interview. That was fantastic. So hopefully yeah. not the last one before he signs with FSU. We shall see. You never know. You never know. Uh, NFL knowledge real quick. We got to well, get going. Quick, Mama Lewis just chimed in if you want to pull it back on it. <laughs> oh, oh, Mom, Mama Lewis is in the chat. Uh, no tattoos, please, she said via YouTube. No tattoos <laughs> I, for you. I told you. No tattoos <laughs> for D-Lo. 
Not I've happening. Been hand, I've been handicapped in what I'm allowed to do. I I'm also. A 20, I'm a 27 year old man. Let me put that out there. <laughs> Still can't make my own choices. <laughs> anyway, you, and on. not even in your own household either. That's for sure. Uh, let's see here. Nope. A um, couple of shower. All right, let's move on here. Up next, real quick, let's talk about Sean Payne and how badly he sucks. Oh my real quick. god, I hate him. He's a complete clown. NFL Knowles. Uh, let's just start off with that. Sean Payton, you suck. You need to unblock me, you clown. I'm ready to tweet you again. <laughs> um, stupid idiot takes out Jameis Winston, puts in Taysom Hill, completely screws up the drive there where for, or uh, for State. New Orleans could have won that game. Instead, you go to where you're going through overtime with the Giants. I'm pretty sure I said on here last week, I'm like, oh, Jameis is facing the Giants. It shouldn't even last more than like the second quarter. I think Dustin, you also said the same thing. And I thought I was hoping for a blowout. And dude, you don't, you don't, I watched the entire game. All right. You don't know how mad I was. Yeah. I didn't get to watch all. Yeah. I was, I watched the whole game. All right. The Giants went up seven nothing. I was like, what the hell? For one, and for for whatever reason is, I mean, Sean Payton has like severely limited what he's allowing Jameis to do through the air. Because, I mean, you look at what the Saints were for the past decade whenever Drew Brees was there. I mean, they were kind of a team that threw the ball first and, and ran the ball second. That's why Drew Brees is second in NFL history in passing yards. And now Jameis, Daniel Jones gets to throw the ball 40 times against the Saints. Jameis throws the ball 19 times. Like, what the hell is up with that? And then when they do let him throw the ball, let's throw a let's throw a running back screen two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Let's throw a wide receiver screen out to the sideline. Like, the one time they let him throw downfield, 56-yard bomb to open the third quarter. Then, like you said, Logan, next drive they take him out. They're like, oh, let's let Taysom Hill do the same thing, and he throws a pick. I mean, you can't make it up. What is his fascination? He, he loves, you think he doing loves stuff? Taysom Hill, man. You think they're in the? Sh- you think they're showering together after <laughs> games? I don't know. I don't. Just questioning things. I don't. I think everybody should be kind of he, wondering what's I, going. I don't on. know what it is. Every time they got down to the goal line, Jameis let him down to the goal line. It's like, all right, let's put Taysom Hill in and let him run his two yard touchdown run. Like take away Alvin Kamara's touchdowns like i'm pretty sure i don't know if alvin kamara has a rushing touchdown this season because every time <laughs> they get down to the goal line they put Taysom hill in and let him run it in from like three yards out i mean he he's had terrible a, he had one good one good play during that whole day and where he was like made, he just ran through defenders yeah, like there a, but on that like a six yard run like yeah, congratulations just let him do, yeah well let him do that i mean he's getting paid enough he should be doing like four of those a game could, with how I much he's getting a, paid i could give a shit about Taysom Hill's six yard runs Damn, it's more damn. about the like the interception. He held the ball for like two <laughs> seconds too long, then just launches it into coverage. Instantly gets picked off. Regardless, though, Saints are up twenty-one to ten in the fourth quarter. I think I think Jameis threw it two or three times total in the fourth quarter. Giants tie it with like thirty seconds left. Saints don't even try to throw it down the field. They just they just run the ball once, let it go to overtime. Of course, Giants win the coin toss. Go right down the field because your defense is gassed as hell because you haven't done anything <laughs> on offense since the first half, and you lose. I mean, it, dude, I almost broke my laptop. I was watching on a legal stream. I don't care. I nearly broke my laptop when that happened. <laughs> Noted. Dustin's watching legal streams. Go get them. Whoever, I don't know what kind of police. Streamies.com. Check it out. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Unbelievable. I didn't say it. It's not. No affiliation Payton with you, the spear. Dude. Yeah, it's all Sean Payton. It's then like I tweeted at him after the game too, so I'm sure I'm going to get blocked in a couple weeks. Oh yeah, no, he'll he'll let you know first before you get blocked. He'll like your tweet just like he did with me, and then block you. But yeah, Sean Payton, you suck. Uh, He's a like fragile-minded you. piece. Of- <laughs> your mom is watching now. Watch I don't yourself. Care. <laughs> but yeah, Sean Payton. You should be fired. Anyways, uh, let's move on to some better things here. Uh, Derwin James gets a game ceiling interception. He's in his bag. Asante played well too. But yeah, Derwin James, game ceiling interception in his game. Monday night football, primetime against the Raiders too. The undefeated Raiders. So I think Justin Herbert's going to be pretty good, guys. I think he's going to be fine in the league. But Derwin's in his bag. Good to see him. 
Uh, I'm trying to think what else Sante happened. Named defensive rookie of the month. Yeah, Sante named defensive rookie of the month. That's huge for the for the young cat out of Florida State. So uh, Joshua Kendo and Eddie Goldman both had solid games. I don't have the stats off the top of my head, but I mean, you know, they were doing some work for their respective teams on the defensive front. Yeah, what am I? Oh, Jaquez Patrick. Yeah, Jaquez. Yeah, start off the series. Made his NFL debut. For the 49ers, yeah. Congrats to him. We're hoping to have him on the show soon. We're hoping to have him on. So now it'll be really exciting to get some thoughts on him playing an NFL game. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to think. There's something else I'm missing. Jalen Ramsey continues to be locked down. Hasn't allowed a touchdown yet this whole season. Uh, by far, I know there's a lot of talk. Oh my God, I'm forgetting. Uh, Diggs. Uh, Trayvon Diggs from Dallas Cowboys who's, don't get me wrong, absolutely talented, leading the uh, league in interceptions. But no one's throwing near Jalen Ramsey, and they're not throwing in the end zone with Jalen Ramsey. And you're not hearing a lot about Jalen Ramsey because he's just on an island enjoying the sun and chilling. So I don't think people are appreciating what Jalen Ramsey's doing right now, but he is on lockdown. That's why we don't hear from him. Like, literally, we don't hear about him the whole entire game. We hear about Aaron Donald. The whole time because that's just him on the defensive line, but you just don't hear much about Jen Ramsey. It just continues to lock down his opponents. So it's not even fair at this point. Am I missing anybody else? Who am I missing? Something else happened. I know in kind of like more more of a sad news, looks like Devontae Freeman's kind of getting phased out of, of Baltimore's run game. So, you know, kind of might be towards the end of the career for him, but I mean still, you know, eight years as a running back in this era, that's a heck of a career made it to a second contract, made some nice money. And, you know, hopefully if this is the end for him, he can be healthy moving into the next phase of his life. Made it so sad there. <laughs> the I feel bad. I feel bad for him, bro. of his life. <laughs> He's a dying that's, dog. That's, our, that's, that's my national championship running back, right? Yeah. I feel bad for him. Yeah, I know. It, it is sad stuff, but great career, though. Almost got that Super Bowl, too, man. He was the running back of the year. I mean, he was the running back, the fantasy guy. I mean, that man won me some money that year, too. That was my first year playing fantasy, and I had him. That man raked in the money for me. Uh, when I say rake, it was like maybe a few hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, like. Ten dollar bets. <laughs> <laughs> I was raking in cash. It was unbelievable. Uh, let's jump into some basketball, Austin, and then we're gonna jump into Florida State versus North Carolina. Maybe Nate will be jumping in there by that time, potentially. Because we're we've do... given him ample opportunity. Oh, we've so. given him a lot more time than last week, so he must have. He's gonna have a lot of time. But basketball is starting to kick up, people. If you're not about it. You better get with it. Get your education up. Austin's the best in the biz right now at basketball coverage. And there's a big time commitment on Friday at 4 p.m. I feel like I'm getting ready for NFL Red Zone on Sunday. Friday, big time commitment. Yeah, J- Julian Phillips, f- five star win out of Blythewood, South Carolina, is committing on Friday at 4 p.m. I would tell you something if I knew something, but this is the, one of the quietest recruitments you will ever find from a five star. Um, you talk to. T- his final four was FSU, USC, Tennessee, and LSU. Depending on the school you talk to, they'll give you a different answer every time. I, I've seriously never seen anything like it. Tennessee's like, eh, it's either FSU or USC. USC's like, eh, it's probably LSU or FSU. LSU's like, eh, it's probably LSU or Tennessee. Like, it, it's just, it's all over the place. Um, seriously, nobody knows anything. We've been digging as hard as we possibly can. Florida State's done a great job in this recruitment, though. Uh, he's from really close to where John Butler went to high school, so those two stay in contact. Um, I know Deontay Green, who just committed, which we'll, we'll get to that in a second. He's trying to get him to Tallahassee. But Florida State, Coach Smith, Coach Young, they, they've done everything they can in this recruitment. And hopefully on Friday it pays off with their third commit in two weeks. It's a big-time one on Friday. And nobody one. knows what's happening. I've been in the huge, group chat for it all, and I have no idea what's happening. There's like at least 100 messages in a day, and I'm just here for the ride. It, it, it's just me and our, and our basketball recruiting guy, Jacob, just sharing what we know, and it's not much. It it's a lot hilarious. of back and forth. It has been hilarious today, though. <laughs> 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 uh, 
it, it's a lot of back and forth. They are they are working. This is annoying. <laughs> No, they're they're working. You don't know how hard they're working. <laughs> <laughs> That's everywhere. They have talked to everyone. Like as soon as we got the announcement that he was committing Friday, like we all texted everybody we knew, and I put in our group chat. I'm like, I'm zero for six. Like, and that never happens <laughs> with, with recruiting because usually somebody knows somebody. And this thing is sealed. It, lips are tight. Like even or the kid I, hasn't I, even made a decision. Yeah, I, like I won't give away a source, but like. Someone that should know doesn't know. So, so we'll yeah. see. Hopefully on, on Friday we, at four, we're we're seeing some good news. I, I feel really good where Florida State stands. Um, that when he visited in what was it like August? I think he visited. I think so. Um, I I just remember hearing just rave reviews about the visit and how, how much he really enjoyed Tallahassee. Um. But that, that was also two months ago. He's coming off a USC visit two weeks ago that he, he really enjoyed. If USC was in Tennessee, I think he's going to USC. But uh, I don't know if he wants to go all the way out to L.A. We'll, we'll see. I, I really have absolutely no idea. <laughs> it's, just, it's a weird recruitment. <laughs> it, like it, You know it's a weird recruitment when we're less than 48 hours out. There's been no new predictions since – the end of September, there's not a single crystal ball on 24 seven. And there's only two future casts on rivals. And one of them was in July. Like this is a weird one. Bobby, you're going into jail for this comment. Uh, he says basketball recruiting doesn't tickle my balls like football recruiting does. You so. to read it out. You couldn't have just said, well, yeah, you, you could have just left it. Well, no, it's the, the podcast listeners won't know what's happening. They didn't want to listen to that. Yeah, Cause I didn't. Well, I'm just putting it out there. It just doesn't tickle his balls like football recruiting does. So you've uh, done two different ball well, speaking, jokes tonight, and it's kind of making me uncomfortable. So whatever. Speaking of basketball recruiting, uh, Florida State got a commitment from Deontay Green out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, was kind of a shock at, at first when I started breaking that he's going to go to Florida State because a lot of people didn't think he was going to leave the state. Um, apparently, after his NC State visit a few months back, he had silently committed to them. He just visited Tallahassee two weeks ago and flipped his silent commitment to Florida State and announced that pretty soon after that he, he would be attending school in Tallahassee. Good pickup, good, good lengthy power forward. Um, the, I noticed in his uh, interview that he compared him or that the staff sees him as Jonathan Isaac, Patrick Williams type. I it's going to take him a couple of years to grow into that, but he's still a talented player. He gets stretched out to three to defend on the perimeter. He, he's exactly what you expect from a, a Florida State three slash four man and you know it seems like florida state's kind of got the floor of that recruiting class built um with, with green tom house and cameron corhan and now you know they're going to go for those two big fish we'll see if they can come out on top yeah, with, with the other big fish being dylan mitchell i know we haven't talked about him in a while but that, that's another recruitment that's that's kind of all over the place but Hopefully you land one of the two. You, you obviously prefer Phillips, but you get one of the two. You're pretty happy with how this class looks. And then last right. thing. Now you're good. I was muted again. Heading, we're heading Common into occurrence. ACC Media Day on Tuesday. Um, we'll be hearing from Anthony Polite, Malik Osborne, and obviously Coach Ham. Um, no surprise on the guests. It's your two seniors outside of Wyatt Wilkes. Um, but, but your two seniors, two guys who should be starting, Plight for sure, Osborne probably. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm interested to see what they say, especially about the new guys. And I, I'm interested to see if they talk about their defense at all, to see if they're going to go back to hedging screens instead of switching everything. So we'll, we'll see if anything <laughs> happens there. But five weeks out, we are officially five weeks out from basketball season. Yeah, Woo, we're getting close, uh, baby. We need to plan ourselves a, a basketball preview podcast so we can really sink in here for an hour and, you know, talk about this upcoming season, talk about lineups, all kinds of different things. All different Absolutely. Guys. Logan, that's that's you. Get your calendar yeah. out. We, we got some guests that I, know, that, we, that I know will be happy to come on. Whoa. We got some guests that want to come on. Uh, Terrence, man, just heading our line. What's going on? T-Man? Pat, Pat, Pat wants to come back. Both Pat and T-Man. What's going on? What are we doing? 
What's going on we, here? We won't spoil anything. We got the Sports Illustrated plug now. What are we doing? Why aren't we? Where's LeBron James when you need him? Come on. He... Where, where's Dave Cowens? Yeah, what are we doing? What's going on here? <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited for some basketball, gentlemen. I am. But I'm still not done with football season, though. I'm, I've am i waited for football season. I understand. Oh, no, I'm done with football season. <laughs> What's football? Get him out of here right now. Get him out. Put him in handcuffs immediately, chat. Put him in handcuffs. Put him in handcuffs right now. All right, guys, let's talk some Florida State versus UNC uh, and give our score predictions here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and start that now. Florida State will be facing Sam Howell and the Tar Heels. Mac Brown still has not got a win against Florida State yet. Oh, and career. 10. Oh, and 10. Yeah. Oh, and 10. No win for him yet. Could that change this weekend? Could that potentially Probably. change for him? Or does that trend continue for Mac Brown? Sam Howell wants a Florida State quarterback commit. Everybody knows that. But Florida State beat the Tar Heels last year in Doak Campbell Stadium. COVID year, they're ranked number five in the country. Still got that chat, that live game day thread inside of our Discord. That is in the chat sod cemetery there hanging out. Uh, good memories of that night. But Florida State will be facing the Tar Heels at 3.30 on ESPN. How are we feeling going into this game? I felt good about going into Syracuse. I still feel solid about North Carolina, but this is a different opponent, though. There's things where, where you look at it and go, there's, there's, there's things Florida State can take advantage of here. Like, Sam Howell's been sacked 22 times in four games. They have eight turnovers through four games, four picks, four fumbles. It's going to be probably a rainy day in Chapel Hill, so you know, ho- hopefully that limits their passing game a little bit. And they don't have a great rushing defense. I think they're lying like 145, 148 rushing yards on the ground on defense. So there's things to like, but UNC's offense is so powerful when they're full gear, full strength. So I don't know. It's either Sam Howell's going to have 700 total yards or it's a close nail-biting game. I don't think it's going to be anything in between. Yeah, you know, I definitely think Florida State has a shot this weekend. And, you know, for all of those same factors that you just mentioned, Austin. But at the same time, I mean, you know, Sam Howell, one of the top quarterbacks in the ACC, if not the top quarterback in the ACC, 14 touchdowns to four interceptions. Yeah, he's got the offensive line problems, and that's going to be an area that Florida State has to take advantage of. But, I mean, at the same time, he's just a damn good quarterback. And, I don't think it's any secret. North Carolina, they've definitely got revenge on their minds. And if this game was in Dope Campbell Stadium, I would feel a lot more comfortable picking it. But North Carolina, from from what I've seen, I mean, they're just a different beast at home. In, in their home games, three home games so far, they're averaging 52.3 points per game. In two road games, 16 points per game. Last week, they beat Duke 38-7 to at home. They've only scored 32 total road points in two games Duke. all season. It's Duke. Yeah, well, they also beat yeah. some other teams up at home. Say and dropped, State, I think so. it was 58 on both of them. So, for whatever reason, that they're just more comfortable um, in Chapel Hill than, than on the road, and we'll see if that continues on Saturday. I do think the weather could end up playing a, a huge factor in this ball game. Let's say the weather does play a factor. We'll get the Jens question here asking, are they better? Is North Carolina better than last year? But uh, the weather's, let's say it's supposed to be a little rainy right now. Does that benefit Florida State more or North Carolina? You know, I think this favors Florida State, I think, in my opinion, running game wise, instead of, you know, you limit a little bit of Sam Howell to his wide receivers. That's number one. Number two, not so worried this year, like maybe should have been or were with North Carolina's running attack than compared to this year. So I think it benefits Florida State in any kind of factor if the weather's doing anything in the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, at that, at that point, it makes it pretty much, you know, an even field or maybe even slightly in Florida State's favor just because you've got those two workhorses at running back and Travis as well, other guys that you can mix in and, like you said, Logan, if it's – I mean, if it's a downpour out there, it's going to be tough for Sam Howell to to spread it around like he normally would. And at the same time, th- this is a North Carolina offense, at least passing attack, 
that mainly goes through wide receiver Josh Downs. And he's got 40 catches, 620 yards, and six touchdowns on the season. The next closest receiver in that lineup, who's actually a tight end, only has 15 catches. So really to me, you know, you focus on shutting Josh Downs down, Downs down. <laughs> so, yeah, but you limit him, and then you have a great chance at, at winning this ball game just because the other playmakers on that offense aren't so proven yet, you know. And we're talking, we saw the comment, are they better than last year? I don't think so. I mean, they lost a ton of productive skill players on this offense that are now in the NFL. Think about Michael Carter, um, Denami Brown. There, there's a couple of other Javante ones Williams. as well. Yeah. I mean, big weapons that were huge for this UNC offense a season ago that Sam Howell no longer has. I think that's why you've kind of seen him limp off to this three and two start. You know, they're still figuring everything out on that offense, but regardless, I mean, Sam Howell is, is elite. Like you mentioned with downs, part, part of it with the offense is you got to get off the field on third down for Florida state's defense, Carolina's top 20 nationally in third down conversions at 48%. And Florida state's middle of the pack at allowing third down conversions at 39%. They got to get off the field. And who do you have covering downs? Like at, there's, we don't have that sure shutdown corner. Can you bracket him with a safety? Like, we haven't seen Florida State's defense scheme against a receiver like this so far this year because we haven't faced a receiver like this. How they contain him is going to be interesting. Are they going to be able to get off the field? Is the weather really going to play, play that much of a factor? You hope it will because the Russian offense hasn't been that great. I mean, you lose two dynamic running backs from last year. You're obviously not going to replace that, but it's been a steep drop off. And how hasn't quite picked it up like they would have thought he would. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. There's things to take away that you can like, but it's also Carolina at home in Chapel Hill, where, like Dustin mentioned, they've been just dynamite in Chapel Hill this year. And I will say, you know, the the one we talked about the UNC offensive line. You know, they've been dealing with a lot of injuries. They haven't had either of their top two um, centers so far this season. You know, you mentioned them giving up. 22 sacks and the one strength that FSU does have on defense is they have a heck of a starting defensive line and some pretty damn good players in the rotation behind those guys as well so you're really going to need that front four to have a a monster effort against this UNC offensive line to really give you a chance to to walk out of Chapel Hill with a win it's going to be a tough game number four and number 11 on Florida State's defense have to have the best game baby and love it too yeah, love it too. I I think Cooper has made some big time strides the last couple of weeks. I thought he's had solid games too. You've got Jared Jackson too. Farmer gets in there, but still I think Levin and Four have got to get after Sam. Now, this is we've talked about it quite a few times this season against some opponents and their quarterbacks, but this is like essential. And they were able to do it last year quite a bit. And that was Florida State's defensive line unit that wasn't too phenomenal in my opinion right i think everybody can agree on that this is a different kind of you know animal on Florida State's defensive line now jermaine johnson is a monster keir thomas has done fantastic you know this is going to be florida state's chances of anything you know i, I don't trust florida state's uh, db room whatsoever uh, and you know i thought they had ups and then they had downs against syracuse but just having one bad half of that is just enough for Sam Howell to put up 30 or more points in that game. Unless Florida State can score, it's just not going to – you can't go another half like that. So, uh, de- defensively, it's going to have to be Jermaine's game. This is – you know, he's, he's going to be on on television here. He, he You know, he's going to be a guy that's going to be drafted this upcoming year. But if you want to move up a tad bit more, a good bit more per se, have a good game this weekend against North Carolina, and your name gets bounced around – you know, everywhere. Yeah. And I mean, you know, the defensive line, in my opinion, they're, they're, they're in line for a solid performance, you know, last two weeks, the pass rush has still gotten to the quarterback, but they just haven't finished. I think that's something awesome mentioned earlier. You know, the defense only had one sack against Louisville and and one sack against Syracuse. So you would really love to see them go out there, pin their ears back and get four or five this weekend against Sam Howell. I mean, just make it, Make it as tough as possible. You know, a lot of people probably aren't going to this game expecting a Florida State win, but it would be nice to see this team see this team once again remain competitive with a good opponent, especially 
on the road in a tough atmosphere. You know, Mike Norvell still has not won a road game during his tenure as head coach. Yeah, I was just about to say that. And we and we've talked we talked going into the Wake Forest game just how bad Florida State's been on the road recently. I think someone put in the comments that Florida State's like two and ten in their last twelve road games, or two and twelve in their last fourteen. Yeah. Not so, so pretty. N- not great odds. Not, not <laughs> the best odds. <laughs> not the prettiest, I would say. Not the greatest. You know, but also, I think. But also shout out UNC for the Bobby mural, like yeah. Wake Forest did. So shout out UNC. Cool move. Great move by them. It seems like that's kind of the, the Wake Forest did it too, and. Definitely with Carolina with Mac Brown having the relationship he had with Bobby. Uh, definitely really great move by them and the program up there and Raleigh. That's definitely a game I'd like to go to if I had any time or, you know, anytime soon, I'd love to go visit a game up there. Hopefully the football stadium is better than the basketball arena. Not so great up there. Arena's kind of dumpy. I hope this doesn't reach any UNC fans, but it's a very overrated <laughs> arena. Austin Vizi saying that North Carolina's uh, like, arena is as prestigious dookie as, as prestigious as a school basketball school as UNC is, you should not have t- ceiling towers falling. Oh my God! That's just that, that's let just it fall on me, please. I'm suing for some money. Yeah, but school, like, I, I remember when we played up there. What was it, 2019 when Kobe White tore us apart? I remember my parents that for some reason they put the visiting teams like like family and friends the upper corner, like where they're behind the scoreboard. Uh. My parents are like, Yeah, there's like the, the tiles are like falling off from the top. <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> nice. Like, how are they that that's pretty much just a basketball program? You can't have a whatever. Not on this they're not on the civic centers level here in Tallahassee. Not on the TL double C, baby. Uh, a question here from Jen saying, does not having Dennis Briggs hurt us much? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. The loss, I know we didn't talk about it. We should have talked about it earlier on, but Dennis Briggs being out for the rest of the season, being on that inside there, I know you have love it. You know, we've talked about Robert Cooper, but still, you know, Dennis Briggs has had a, has had a solid season too, but losing him additional depth. I mean, that's a, that's a starting defensive lineman you're losing. Uh, and it's not going to help at all. It's not going to help this weekend now. Yeah. I mean, you're really going to need those guys. Uh, we talked about Josh, uh, not Joshua Farmer. We talked about Jared Jackson earlier mm-hmm. and, you know, Joshua Farmer as well. And I think we'll probably see um, the defensive ends get flexed down some in, in certain situations just to kind of help offset that loss. Cause I mean, Dennis Briggs, in my opinion, had been Florida State's probably best interior lineman up to this point, right alongside with, with Fabian Lovett. And, you know, he didn't have eye popping stats, but he was doing his job in the middle of that defense to set others up and make him plays whenever he could. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think Michael commented on here. wonder if Dabo will put up the Bobby mural. I definitely think he will. He had a really close relationship with Bobby. So I know Dabo's Dabo. I know Nate doesn't like it, but I do think they will 110%. They'll definitely have something special for Bobby up there in Death Valley. All right, let's get to it, gentlemen. The best part of the podcast every week. Score predictions where the fun really happens. And we see now if anybody can catch up to me. I'm just going to be so annoying the next couple of weeks until someone gets up there with me. But... Delu, what are you at? And Austin, what are you at? I think we're three Austin and two, now three and two. four and one. Yeah. Nate and is Nate. Uh, one and four because <laughs> he picked <laughs> Syracuse last week. He's like, I'm going to yeah. pick FSU until they win. Then he flips to Syracuse. And then he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's and always he a bad luck. He did not do it. Since I've Nate got... is not here, do you want to read his prediction off? Yep, I've got it right here. So we'll well, Nate, start us off. Nate. Let's start us off. Appreciate it, Nate. He says, this game reminds me a bit of the Notre Dame game going in and that I can see Florida State winning this game. Offensively, Sam Howell and Josh Downs will give the defense fits. I expect Downs to have a huge game. One thing to note is that UNC is giving up 4.4 sacks a game. FSU pressured Howell last year very well in the upset, and they're better this year. Defensively, UNC is just okay. They do anything well. 
Georgia Tech ran for over 260 yards on them. FSU will have to hit hit the big plays to win. I'm tempted to pick FSU, but I'm not. <laughs> UNC 35, FSU 30. So he's got a close one between Florida State and North Carolina this upcoming weekend. You know, I think he's having to play a little bit smarter and actually pick smart now. Everybody in the chat, too, as always, put the score predictions in. I know a lot of you already throwing them in here. But go ahead and throw in the score prediction. Everybody listening on YouTube, Twitter, throw in the score predictions so we can read these out. But, gentlemen, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? You know, great, great. Another great week of practice. Note that, seems like. Another good week of practice. Well, Norville like, oh. wasn't happy today. Well, I think that's a little bit. Jumbo used to do it, and they ended up playing really well that weekend. I don't know. You know, that's, you know, maybe coaches speak. You never know. Maybe it really was a terrible practice. Maybe it was. I see a lot more people commenting here than usual. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people that I like this. I like this. Montre is saying 31, 28 bricks is saying 38, 24 UNC bear. Tugi saying 24, 20 Florida state. <sighs> Austin, you're the closest to this game than us. So let me like, go first. Yeah, I'm just finding a reason for you to go first. I'm just finding a reason for you to go before everybody else. And, and you did say, Austin, you said, you're never going to predict Florida State until they yeah. win a game. I won't predict them to win. But now that you're off that leash, yeah, now, you're now you're now free. Now that I'm not contractually binded. Yeah, you're um, not. Con- yeah. It, it's still not changing. <laughs> I, I, I don't expect this to be. Honestly, don't even expect this to be close. Mm. Um, I, I know Dang, that's what he sad. said. I'm sorry. I know I, I know it sounds negative, but I, I just think UNC has too much firepower on offense, and Florida State's defense has made Wake Forest quarterback look like a Heisman contender. So I, I don't exactly have hope. Um, and barely beating Syracuse doesn't really do anything to give me more hope. Um, I, I think Florida State's defensive line is going to get after it, and I, hopefully they, they lean on the run game more than they have in the past. So Florida State can, can sustain some drives, but I just – I don't have faith in a Jordan Travis led team to go on the road and, and upset North Carolina. I just don't. Until we can stretch the field vertically and hit those big plays, I just don't. I have UNC 41 to 17. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's crazy because I have UNC scoring 41 too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, now, just to note, everybody, I know Austin's saying that. He's sound, saying some – things that might sound smart but what was that score last weekend that you had predicted against syracuse i don't care no 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 no, no. i think it's worth 17 the... so i was close on syracuse's points and i was also expecting was more i thought it was worse than that i thought you said something i thought That's you said 27 something. 17 i think i thought it was higher than I, that. I almost flipped it to 27 10 that's i I, <sighs> said, I put that in our group chat when he said travis is starting <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> Damn, Jesus, 41-17. Is that just because of revenge? Really? They're pissed off? It, part, part, of it's re- part of it's revenge. Part of it's no faith. Golly. <laughs> it's, it's part, part of it's I live by a lot of North Carolina fans. And you're going to give them all this? You're going to give them all this? Damn. I'm, I'm at least being honest. All these points? And and yes, I know it's raining. I don't care. <laughs> I, legit. Like like Dustin said, they've averaged what fifty points per game at home this year. Fifty two point three. I don't think a little bit of rain is going to stop them. It rains almost every day here. It, It'll be it, our it luck. It. It'll be Florida State's luck that there's going to be a three and a half hour hole in the sky. It's going to be dry in Chapel Hill, but <laughs> raining, <laughs> and the entire like all across the country, it except for right boy. there. Yeah, it might rain in the morning beforehand, so it's a little moist, so then Sam Howell can just grip that ball better. You know, like a good, nice, firm grip on the ball. Like, those balls are going to be flying through his hands. You just keep going for it, huh? Dustin, give us your score prediction. You're just not, not going to stop. He's gonna, his, ball, his hands on the balls are going to be great, I feel like. I know what you're doing. We need to check the rain in the morning. That's all I'm saying. If there's rain in the morning, watch out. If there's not, then... Wet hands on balls no one really likes. Let's get going. Score prediction, Dustin. Yeah, I mean, to me, this one comes down to, you know, how good 
North Carolina is at home and then plus the the revenge factor. I mean, I, I don't think this is a team that that's going to overlook Florida State last year, which, you know, Florida State pulled off that upset, but I don't think they played the best version of, of North Carolina in 2020. I, I don't think anyone can argue that. I mean, North Carolina, they simply overlooked the Seminoles last year. And I mean, they paid the ultimate price for it. You know, credit to Florida State for taking advantage of it. I just think this time around, they're going to have all eyes focused on FSU. Um, Vegas, expecting this to be a high-scoring game, the over-under is actually 64. So, I mean, I do think there's going to be some points put up on the board by both teams. And, you know, Florida State as well can take advantage of a UNC defense that Nate mentioned doesn't really have a lot of special talents on it. If Florida State is going to win this game, it's going to come down to, once again, you know, converting in the red zone and also not turning the ball over. Every game this season, all all five games this season, Florida State has lost a turnover battle. Imagine what they could do if they would win the turnover battle in a football game. They might just pull off an upset in North Carolina. I don't see it happening this week. I think Sam Howell is going to come out, have a great game, and, and finally beat FSU for the first time since uh, signing with UNC. I'm going to go North Carolina 41, FSU 31. Oh, okay. So a lot more points, a lot more points than what Austin's predicting. I think there's going to be some points in this game. I just don't think it's going to be enough. I don't think Florida State's there yet to beat a team like UNC on the road. I do think this is this is kind of a spoiler. I think they're going to come back home next week and beat the shit out of UMass. So, <laughs> hey, how nice of you to predict that? that was very two weeks. Two weeks. Sorry, bye week coming up. Yeah, what are we doing? Come on, get the two schedule weeks. right. Come on. Thankfully, you thankfully, FSU beat Syracuse, so I don't have to predict UMass to beat us in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, because I think you were. I was sure you would love to. Now Ooh, Austin's the menace. Give me some laughs. Oh, my goodness gracious. Jesus Christ. William McMillan with the nice super sticker. I don't know what a super sticker is, but damn, I love that super sticker. It's worth $5. I'll, it's I'll a five. It. That, is, that works. That take all pays. the stickers I can. That pays for a quarter of Dustin's dinner at Whataburger. That's a big meal. For a big man. You're a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can get a shake with that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can Give add me on a $20 dollar allowance. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to get you cut. You got to get ready for the wedding. So, Although you've already been sized, so you can't really, <laughs> you can't really slim down. You're not allowed to anymore. Yeah, you uh, take it to the tailor or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Two weeks. The fabric guy. A fabric guy. And they like stitch it up and bam. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lordy. Uh, Oh, this is tough now. This is tough. This is tough. You know, being in the lead. I haven't really said it much tonight, but being in the lead now. It would be smart just to stay with us because then no matter what, you keep the lead. (laughs) But someone's going to be – there's going to be some switches. There's going to be a a little bit of switches here in the season because, you know, they're they're, they're competitive. They're not pick every single week. Yeah, someone's gonna have to someone's gonna have to leave the group eventually to catch up and meet me. But it might be it might be the Clemson game. Wow, Dep- that... depending on how we look the next few weeks, it might be the Clemson game. Whoa, Austin's getting you fun. picking Florida State in the Clemson game. I'm just saying, depending on how we look the next few weeks, we'll see. Okay, we'll see. Wow. Uh, all right. Uh wow. Okay. Austin's just it's, up and down. I don't know what they get from us. I don't want to be what depressed. Is, what's going on? I don't know either. I don't know. He switched sides. He switched on us like that. Uh, Florida State, I think this game, uh, the practices look good again this week, but I think the big one is going to be North Carolina one in revenge from last year. I think Florida State's defensive line is going to show up, but I'm still worried about the miscommunication that's happening in the defensive backfield. I thought they started off the game pretty great last week, but they just can't do two halves. And like we said earlier, one half is good enough for Sam Howell to put it up enough points where Florida State's offense, I don't think, is there yet on a consistent basis to put up points. I think it's better to have Jordan Travis out there just for points and getting you down the field and have a better production. Uh, um, And I do think that Florida State will have some success running the ball. I think Deshaun Corbin has a big day. Sean Ward will too. Those two will be key. And Jordan Travis, those three guys on offense are are gonna be have to be huge. I like to see Florida State use a little bit more Cameron McDonald too, because he deserves more targets and you know he he 
if he has a chance to get the ball, I let him get some space too. Cause he's almost like a hybrid. He's got some size, but he's, he played really well against Syracuse. So I'd like to see it. The tight ends get into more of a rotation in this game, this upcoming weekend. If it's just a little wet, give them a little dump offs to Karen McDonald or Jordan Wilson. But I'm not, I'm not trusting fuller fully on the defense, even though he dapped me up and practically <laughs> broke my hand. Uh, <laughs> I need that right hand for a lot of reasons, Fuller. But for number one, I can't pick Florida State to win this game this weekend. I've got Florida State losing in Raleigh, but I think a competitive game going into the fourth quarter. I've got Florida State. We got Florida State. We got Florida State 27, North Carolina 34. And I think that's a close one. I don't think it will be my closest like I did last week. But I think it will be competitive. I think that's pretty good. 35-27 is pretty pretty close IMO, which means in my opinion. Be- because you keep calling Chapel Hill Raleigh, I'm changing my pick to 45-17 because it's just extra motivation. <laughs> I can't say Raleigh. Raleigh's NC State. They get mad. I about just, that. I just now remember that. Yeah, I just now remember <laughs> they, that. They get mad. Why didn't y'all tell that. me that earlier? Then, Trap- damn it! I wasn't paying I attention. It's Chapel, Chapel Hill. Hill. For a say it. I even Someone said Chapel Hill. We had microphones. Times. Someone tell me. Don't make me sound stupid for I said an Chapel hour and a half. So many times. I did too, about. dude. I was just thinking that's the basketball. I even said it's going to be rainy in Chapel Hill. That's the basketball term. I don't know. Uh, someone tell me, text me, put in the chat, or talk to me like we are live on a live like stream. Like you listen to us anyways. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm looking at other things right now. Oh, man. Gosh. Yeah. No, I had a lot of other things. Sharkbite says that's a great prediction. I think so, too. I think I got a good Terrific. Prediction. I wish it was the other way around, but we'll see. But we should have done this before the damn score predictions. You distract me, Austin. Uh, but... Before the well, before the game and after the game, actually, really before, go get your wings at Hobbit, or you can pick up a burger, fries, wraps, anything you want at Hobbit. Go pick up some wings, grab them; they taste amazing. If you want, try the Garnet Gold; those are fantastic. Or try Carolina Gold; those are my favorite sauces. Get them extra crispy, extra wet. If you like it, they'll hook it up. Also, if you want to um, set up. I almost said appointment. It kind of is appointment watching Florida State football this year, but set up a booth, call them ahead, and they'll pull up the game for you. I mean, they're going to have it rocking anyways, but grab a uh, booth, grab a table with friends, family, and go watch the game at Hobbit. Uh, Call them ahead of time, too. Make sure you get a table. But best wings in town. If you like wings, I'll probably be grabbing them on Saturday before I head to my dad's to grab about 40 wings, sit down and chow down and watch Florida state versus North Carolina, along with some other games this weekend, but definitely appreciate Hobbit for always sponsoring the show. They're the best. We love them and shout out to them and go help also a local business here in town. So make sure you grab those boneless boneless. Sorry. Yeah. What are you here? Why? Yeah. Why are you doing that? You idiot. (laughs) Uh, Any last comment controversy going? No, we don't. Last comments, yeah. I saw uh, someone mention in the in the chat earlier um, talking about Julio Skinner's upcoming commitment um, on, on Friday, and he released the top six. I can't remember everybody that made it, but to me, this recruitment, it's kind of down to two schools right now, and that is um, Alabama and Texas. I did originally have Julio Skinner. I predicted him to commit to FSU during the summer. I changed that following his, his um, official visit to Florida State just because, you know, I heard things didn't go um, um, extremely well. And, you know, since then, it kind of seems like both parties have kind of parted ways from one another. So I don't expect your little Skinner to wind up at Florida State. I currently have him predicted to Texas, but there's also a lot of Alabama smoke. So one of those two schools, that's where I see him ending up at. Couple comments on my end. Uh, I want to give a happy birthday to here the spare alum PJ Savoy. Hey, nice. Oh, oh, J. Long, Vegas. Three, three J. Happy birthday, three J. And then we, we were talking about basketball previews earlier. I'll actually be previewing Florida State on the Screen the Screener podcast tomorrow. So if y'all want to check that out, you're getting screened tomorrow. Uh, okay. What's going on? You, this is like your fourth comment. We need to what? 
what you're getting you screwed <laughs> you need to end this all right what's going on in the screener screener what 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 is it screen the screener podcast Okay, now that okay, screen the screener. That is kind of a confusing name. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a basketball term. It, it's I get the those. screens. I get the screens. Screen so the screener. Talking some Florida State basketball tomorrow. It's 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 how you get like the backdoor lobs. That's how you. That, it comes from that. Oh, I know everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Screen. Okay, so check that out. What time is that? Is that live? I don't know if it's live yet or not. Uh, we they literally just sent me up last night, so we're still figuring things out. But w- worst case, I'll, I'll post about it on Twitter. Yep. Go follow Austin on Twitter. The link is actually down in the YouTube description, and it's also on iTunes everywhere. So go go follow Austin if you aren't already. Uh, any last comments from me? Uh, we're beating the Denver Broncos. Go Steelers, baby. Not even nervous. We're back. The Steelers are last place in the division. They're not beating anybody. You know, here's the deal. I'm getting Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be winless right now, bro, except for a fluke game. Fluke week one. The fluke was us getting called back a touchdown and would have been a 10-point swing on everything. Like, literally. That was a real problem. The refs screwed us. Yeah. It would would be less less surprising if you guys didn't win a single game the rest of the year than if you Mm. made playoffs. I don't even want to know who I'd want in court. (laughs) Here's the deal. Here's my two options, what I've got. Sean Payton. Keeps playing this Taysom Hill BS and Jameis comes to Pittsburgh because he's tired of it. Or I think it's almost said and done written on the wall that uh, Aaron Rodgers will be in Pittsburgh next season anyways. So uh, love you, Big Ben, but we are in struggle mode right now. Things aren't looking too pretty. Yeah, you are getting Deshaun Watson. You need Deshaun Watson. Whoa, whoa. That's what you are getting. Be a perfect replacement for Big Ben. (laughs) Could you (laughs) imagine? I'm going to. Let's go ahead and get Dustin off the screen. <laughs> Dustin's off the stream. I just removed Dustin from the stream. He's down there. He's going to stay there for 10 more seconds after his comment there. Um, but yeah, I'm no, I'm no longer going to bring up the Steelers. I should have never done that anyways. <sighs> All right. Let's go and get off here. Thank you as always for listening to uh, Hear the Spear presented by NoelGameBait.com. We will be live in the back. Hey, make sure you guys are on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Noel game day and there we're giving live practice updates we're giving you guys inside scoop recruiting scoop everything the aj duffy interviews that goes out to everybody first inside the discord so that's patreon.com slash Noel game day only 299 a month for all of that coverage and like i said austin's trying to give you all the latest on commitment watches and everything and and into basketball season so this is going to be the prime time for you to go ahead and join at patreon.com slash Noel game day if you're on youtube right now Hit that like button. We would definitely appreciate it. It's free, easy, quick, and smooth. You guys are awesome. We definitely appreciate all you guys hanging out with us this evening. Hit that subscribe button, and we will talk to you guys during our instant reaction on Saturday night. I promise it won't just be me and like a day later. It will be a majority of us. So y'all have good. y'all have a good weekend. Enjoy the games. And also, wait, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. I don't know if you guys watch boxing. Who are we picking? I got uh I got Tyson Fury. I don't yeah, know I if anybody in the I chat. I think he's probably gonna win this one. It's the trilogy fight. Feeling a comeback, yep. yeah. Yep. Deontay won the first one. Tyson won the second one. I think Tyson gets this. Comes uh, out this on weekend. Top. Big boxing match. Big boxing match this weekend. So I'm looking forward to it. Got some good decent games football wise, and then late in the nights, a little bit of boxing. Looking forward to it. Anybody in the chat got any comments on that? Ah, we probably won't wait for them anyways. All right, everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you guys later. And uh, yeah, enjoy the weekend.